on today's episode of the Event Tech Pull Up. Tess and I are talking about Event Tech Live, where we are going to be broadcasting coming up in April. Welcome to the Event Tech Pull Up. My name is Tess Vismel from iSocialX, and my fearless partner is Keith Johnston from i3 events and planner wire and i don't know which one i should do first there but i3 i'm gonna go with i3 events today because tess tess knows where i am but i yes. most people probably i am in one of the world's most iconic hotels we we just yes. actually wrapped up a program uh hence the horrible uh meeting room i'm in uh but a lovely program at the chateau frontenac uh in quebec city uh very yeah. successful hybrid event it was amazing and but, Keith, tell us the most memorable part of that event. Oh, there were a lot, but it was for for the first time in a long time, the Encore AV crew here was absolutely spectacular. <laughs> that means you have Encore notes. Uh, Very nice, right? You know, and and I know that you know on on here and over on you know, the bullet list, our, our other collaborative podcast, I've talked about Encore has not been pulling their weight lately. Uh, but these guys were absolutely top notch. Um, they knew what they were doing. The their equipment was in great shape. They were in great shape. Um, on time, I the show, I mean, we did, it was a hybrid event. So, you know, we had people coming in remotely, speakers, viewers, and everything did go absolutely according to plan with very little, very, I mean, I mean there were literally no mistakes. Which oh, is, wow, beautiful. Right? We love that. Amazing. Which is we love to hear that. Yeah, that, I mean, for, for any, I mean, I don't care who the AV company is, having zero mistakes on a hybrid event is, is is unusual because um, it it's unusual. almost impossible, um, but it, it did. It went very, very well. But but that isn't the reason why we're here. The reason we're here today is actually to talk about -da 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 -da. Boom, boom. Event Tech Live, which I'm absolutely stoked um, because we are going to be recording, <laughs> broadcasting live, meeting live. with people. <laughs> um, you know, I, I mean, just the exhibitor list alone, uh, you know, of yeah, all of the it's amazing. Who are be there. So in case you didn't grab that, we are going to be at Event Tech Live, April 26th through 27th, and it's going to be at the Expo at the World Market in Las Vegas. And the yeah. important thing about this is Event Tech Live has been overseas in the UK for gabillion years right okay. we had a chance to go over this past year and i was so excited right and we've judged on it for a while right but now they're actually bringing it to the u.s for us for the first time so we're extra excited about that yeah ahead, and, well and you know and um, uh, there are a lot most of the event tech companies that are going to be exhibiting are, are companies we know right and in fact we know this we know them so well that it would be go to dinner with them if they happen to be in town um you know, but there are some companies that I'm 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 actually excited to see, right? Because I actually don't know anyone and I don't know much about them, right? You yeah. know, you know, the clay is gonna be there, gravitate, um, higher space, uh, rain focus, you know, these are all companies, you know, of course I've heard of, but have never actually seen a demo or you know, see what they do. Right. So so I am actually really excited to to not only sit down and talk to them for an episode, but also to to walk around, you know, like an attendee and actually get a feel uh, for, for what they do. Yeah, and you all have an opportunity, you know, drop some information in some in the uh, comments area, send us a message, do whatever you want. You say, okay, I really wanna hear more from this particular um, vendor or this particular exhibitor and sponsor. Let us know, cause we'd love to take some kind of requests. We wanna do a little behind the scenes, kind of give you a sense of what it's like to produce an event like this. Our dear friend, Adam Perry, who is the leader and ideologist for this, for this particular show, 
um, is much. giving us a good <laughs> look at what is giving us a, a good window in. So we want to take really good um, advantage of it. And there's so many sessions going on that I'm like, how are we going to sit in them all, Keith? What are some of your favorites? Um, all right. For, so for sessions, you know, and, and I think, you know, giving everybody a kind of a window into our thinking and, and what we're planning to do, you know, we are actually going to go to a session uh, and then we'll pull those speakers out and and have them sit down with us because we'll have our little podcasting area. Um, so so to have them come out and sit down and then have a chat with us. But but I one of the ones that I'm most excited for is. Um, your data journey, uncovering your path to data success, you know, because I, you know, again, I'm a third party planner and, 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 and a lot of times clients want to take that get, cause we, we capture so much data, right? They just, and then you have it and to help them find the time and to actually use that data to make the next event better is sometimes a challenge. So it's really going to be cool um, to see what experts say about data and what they're doing with it, you know, so that maybe we can take some of this and, and, and maybe organizations will be able to actually use that data to create better events for their attendees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You? Well, I, I'm, I'm looking for it, for it to so many, there are too many of them. So how AI driven event platforms are changing the planner attendee experience. Really excited about what that's going to look like because it's coming from a tech provider's perspective. And I'd love to be able to hear that. Um, and then there's another one um, that is what is the ethical face, what is ethical face analysis? Understanding the possibilities and limitations of AI technology, because I guess you know I'm interested in AI, right? Um, and that's by our friend Panos. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Uh, well, and I was going to say with the with the facial recognition, you know, people are are nervous. Right. It is something mm -hmm. that's stressing people out, uh, you know, and, you know, driver's licenses, the government already has your face. <laughs> so so but is what what are corporations going to do with it? Right. You know, yeah. how, you know, so I am actually very excited to see that one. And, and and especially from the tech provider, when you can actually hear how they handle that data and what they do with that data. Um, is it secure? Yeah. Or is it not? Or elsewhere like are we living in a universe where we think we should be not sharing certain things or what is the aspect of sharing can we not share our face uh, yeah well you know, that's the question just, can and, we not share our face well and and i think and i hope they actually get into this on the session during the session but you know you know what are the terms and conditions right so yes you're doing facial recognition for admittance into an event say Okay, great. You know, what are they going to do? You know, Ticketmaster has been toying with the idea of using facial recognition on your tickets to get into an arena or to get into a, you know, a show. And Ticketmaster scares me. I, I, I don't want really? them to have, I don't want mm. them to have that type of information about me because I don't think Ticketmaster is a, a very, a very ethical company. Yeah. Well, uh, hey, my favorite, my heart of all hearts, Delta Airlines use, utilizes facial recognitions all the time. So they have an opt-in if you're flying alone. Now they had it in beta for a long time, kind of rolled it out a little bit. You opt into digital facial recognition. It'll, um, they have a separate area in Atlanta where you go in and you're able to check your bag with that facial recognition much faster than you can upstairs in the regular area, let's say regular people's area. And then when you come to, to um, the TSA area, there literally is TSA pre-check, there's a facial recognition area, and then it's clear. Now, the regular TSA is way over there, but literally there's this line that's straight through clear in TSA pre-check that is just for that opt-in facial recognition piece. And you fly through even in front of clear oftentimes because not a lot of people have signed up for it. And, you know, I'm on the other opposite side. I'm on the side of they already have it. Yeah. You know, that's if you sleep well at night, feeling like you need to protect it, that's on you. But on me, it's like they have it. I well, like technology and I like it for ease of use in terms of who has it, and who's taken this and who, who hasn't taken it and what they're going to do with it. Can I control that? I can't control that. I can just protect myself the best way that I can and make me feel better. That's all. That's always my perspe perspective around um, 
uh, cybersecurity. We can do better about protecting ourselves, not have it all hanging out there. But when it comes to face, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I can go I, silent on that one. <laughs> and I don't even think we understand what they could do with it yet. Right. It's exactly. it's one of those things. It's like, okay, facial recognition. What do you, I mean, my bank doesn't do facial recognition. So it's not like you can go clear out my accounts. If you had, a, you know, if you, if you put on your Tom Cruise mission impossible mask of me, <laughs> um, yeah. but before we go down that rabbit hole, you know, one of the, one of the sessions that I'm actually most excited for, and, and, and no, we haven't asked any of these speakers if they, if they're willing to come talk to us at our area yet, but that I am actually really excited for is um, the one on uh, how to produce high quality content on a low budget. Um, as Ooh. you know, uh, I have that sweet spot in my heart for, you know, those those associations and nonprofits that, that don't have a ton of budget, right? And, and it's what can I do to help them, you know, create an amazing, spectacular event that looks like it came from the big boys. Um, when they only have pennies to spend. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really, really excited for that one because any new ideas that I can get um, help my clients. Yeah, um, there's so many others. There's Touchless Seamless Streamlined, which is the future of travel and hospitality for the events. Lots of people have the word hybrid in their title. And it's interesting because I know so many people don't like that word, but yet have not created another word to be able to use. So I think that'll be interesting to ask people as we're going through the conference. Like, so why are you not going to use the word hybrid? Why are you like, using the like word that hybrid? Word. Right. Like, I mean, okay, well, give me the what word do you want to use? <laughs> exactly. And nothing has popped up and resonated that actually sticks for people. And, and, so there are tons of it. The beautiful thing that I love about Keith um, Event Tech Live is Adam is to me, phenomenal when it comes to planning a day. It's freaking 10 to four. Can we have a conference that's 10 to four? Beautiful. Did you hear me? 10 to four. Matter of fact, day two, 10.30 a.m. in the morning. Why does it have to be seven in the morning? Cray cray, right? And that's 10.30 to 3.50 is the last one begins. So that's really like 10 to 10 to four, both days. And it's only two days and he has spaces in between so people can actually enjoy themselves so and actually, i think that's really good actually talk. interact and talk and chat and interact and, and and that that's one of the things that this client up here in canada that is actually one of the best things about them is that yes they do start early their breakfast is is pretty early but they build in so many breaks throughout the day that it's like we went yesterday they had a break they did a session and went right to another break and it was like, and, and, and that's when, I mean, all of their attendees at the end of this thing were, they were laughing, they were happy, nobody was exhausted. Um, they were supposed to, yesterday, they were supposed to go from uh, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and the second, the second half was, was a discussion time it was, of the day yesterday was a discussion time and things like that. And they get, did get to a point at like one o'clock and they were like, you know, I, I, we think that we've covered it all. Beautiful. And, Gave people four hours of their time back. Oh my gosh. And they Amazing. Wheeled, but they wheeled in carts of snacks and food and drinks and, and then everybody just like went off and, and in the room and had co great conversations. I mean, that the, their events are always really, really well attended and that's why. Yeah, that, that, that to me is how it should be. So hopefully we'll find some technology, some good technology, as well as some new things. I'm really always excited about the newness, about how we can talk about all the quirky stuff, things that are they're trying and attempting. And as we know, this is the world and the time for innovation and creativity, right, Keith? Yes, and we got to talk about my session that has the 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 my favorite title of the whole thing, which is. <laughs> Is technology like putting lipstick on a pig? <laughs> you know, and and, yeah. <laughs> and and the 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 session itself is about the relationship of event design and integrity, uh, and the appropriate application of that technology. Because there are so many people, and 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 bless them, I actually do have uh, another client um, that that it was hard to make them understand that just getting an event app is not going to make your event a success. Right, exactly. 
you know, technology is not the Band-Aid. You know, technology mm -hmm. is there to enhance your event, right? Assist, if you have, it's assist, your assistant. If you have great technology, you know, uh, you know, here up here we've been using Menometer, right, for polling and stuff. It was great. They used it very, very well, you know. But if you just start throwing polls out for no reason, just because you think that it's engagement, not going to work. Right, right, exactly. You have to be thoughtful in how you place it and what you do. So, so yeah, look forward to seeing us live. And and technically, Keith. I don't know if our audience remembers, this is not the first time we've gone live for Event Tech Live. <laughs> oh, no, we did do a session, didn't we? I didn't even remember. We, we actually, <laughs> during COVID, uh, when everyone was sheltering in place, Event Tech Live continued to go on. And we were one of the featured podcasts that kicked off the week of their virtual event. And we actually went live during that particular week. So this, this is, is a bad pretty much a continuation. And this is a bad habit with me because there was somebody here who actually was like, yeah, I, I remember the session you did on at this show about this. And I was like, huh. <laughs> I didn't even remember doing it. Uh, that's when you're just so great. You can't remember all the great things you've done for people and how you inspired them. Yes, but it was kind of, it, yes, to your point, it was very awesome that they actually came up and were like, hey, because of this, we did this. So. Yeah. And, I like that. Yeah, yeah uh, that's why we're here. That's the only reason why we're here is to be able to inspire and share. So. Yeah. Yes, and I do think coming up in the coming weeks um, before Event Tech Live, um, we will actually have a couple of guests that are coming on, um, for, you know, that will be there. Uh, for example, our good friends at Amtrath uh, are actually going to be exhibiting. Um, so mm -hmm. I hope everybody can take a minute and go see them. Um, this will be their first time exhibiting at Event Tech Live, and I think that their, their meetings travel uh, technology product is actually one of the best out there. Um, I use it for, for, we just actually started using it with one client that needs to have managed travel. So I, I really hope that everybody can take some time and go see them. Um, yeah, they're good, they're very good. Yes. So Tess, bring us home, wrap us up for the day. Okay, let's remind you that April 25th to 27th, we will be in, Las Vegas, Nevada for Event Tech Live coming to you live as a broadcast, giving you some behind the scenes as well as some tidbits and tips and some cool little interviews and hopefully make you feel as though you know much more about the event tech that's flying around in our industry. We want to thank Adam Perry and his team and his crew for allowing us the opportunity to be there. And we're very happy and thankful for the sponsors of Event Tech Live as well. So look forward to seeing you. Thanks for joining us this week on the Event Tech Pull Up. Make sure to visit us on our website, eventtechpullup.com. That's eventtechpullup.com. And find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. So never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating or simply tell a friend about our brand of crazy. That would be amazing. Interested in becoming a guest? Check out the application on our website. If you'd like Tess, Keith, or both at your next event or in-house training, please email us at tech at eventtechpullup.com. That's tech at eventtechpullup.com. Thanks for joining us this week on the Event Tech Pull-Up.